to Soho Trent and the world. This is Six Towns Radio. It is Six Towns Radio, and as you know, tomorrow at Burzum Cricket Club, it's a night of comedy, and one of the stars of that night is on the phone with me right now, Dan Bland. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm not too bad. I'm not too bad, thank you. Are you looking forward to coming back to Stoke on Trent? Um, yeah, it's uh, it's always uh, always a great place to uh, uh, for comedy because um, I've played it a few times in the before. It's always been you know very good receptive audiences, so I'm very much looking forward to coming back. Yeah, I saw you at um, it was at Burzum at Tommy Cheadle's the comedy night they did there. Oh yeah, he rings the bell. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose you do that many gigs. Um, <laughs> the the, the tent's kind of blur into one after a while. Yeah. Yeah. So besides working the circuit, do you get to go out much yourself, Dan? Um, it's, I tend to. Um, I mean, for, for me, I, I tend to. Uh, my kind of social life tends to actually revolve uh, around stand comedy itself. It has to be said. So uh, it doesn't make me a very well-rounded individual, but it does at least. You know, I just, I just kind of enjoy. I get everything I need out of comedy. Really, I get all the. You know, uh, everything I need from that. So. Yeah, any night I can, I'll, I'll be gigging, and I tend uh, not to socialise much, uh, which, uh, and out loud, actually makes me sound, sound quite sad. But, <laughs> yeah. Not at all. Um, I suppose doing something like comedy, you've got to surround yourself by it all the time, um, especially to get yourself off the ground. That's it. I mean, I think it always helps if, if you are a fan of it and, and enjoy it, and uh, it's, I think that hopefully comes through rather than you know, and just treat it as a job, really. Yeah, so who were your comedy heroes when you first started out? Uh, well, I think when I, when I first um, started out, um, it would be the kind of the more mainstream acts. I think Frank Skinner was a big influence yeah. on me. And uh, also Bob Monkhouse uh, as well. He, I was a big fan of him, uh, his stand-up, uh, yeah. before I kind of um, got into it. And they're kind of two comics I remember seeing years ago and watching them and really thinking, yeah, that's something I'd like to do. Yeah, Frank Skinner is one of my heroes as well. A really, really funny guy. <laughs> well, that's the thing with comedians. They talk about what they know uh, a lot of the times, and your comedy incorporates AA meetings and holidays at Beachy Head. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, my, my kind of volume isn't kind of based on personal experience. It's, I mean, I'll put this, I mean, the jokes I tell, I think you're very obviously jokes, and it's, and it's just kind of, you know, the same thing that, I have a kind of a vague knowledge of, and hopefully the audience has a vague knowledge of as well, so we've got that kind of shared understanding. But I, I don't tend to go into much detail about my own personal life and kind of my own experience, really. Yeah. I've always kind of, you know, just kind of, just kind of, things have a, a, a general awareness of that I hope that the audience uh, shares. And one thing that can be said of your comedy, it's delivered at a very slow pace. Uh, it yeah. could be said that. <laughs> Yeah, so that's a uh, fair comment. Yeah, it's um, it's uh, yeah, it, it, can, it can be an issue um, because uh, I, I think uh, I mean the death panting is just kind of thing that's kind of evolved naturally. It's not something I kind of um, you know set out to do to, to begin with. And um, it's uh, I am kind of sometimes I'm kind of quite conscious that you know you need a bit more kind of variation in pace or maybe give the audience a, a bit more value. You know, the quicker, the quicker delivery. But, um, I mean, the pace I use, I use now um, tends to suit me, but, I mean, I'm also trying to be, kind of have a bit more variation, but I'm never going to be a kind of Lee Evans style, like in a quick fire, you know, kind of ball of energy. No, it ball works, though. It really does work, and I think you've honed it down now. Um, I think it was the BBC, not as a collective, but one journalist said, imagine if Ian Curtis had gone into stand-up yeah. rather than music. <laughs> that's quite a fair comment. Yeah, that's. Uh, I have to confess, because um, when I when I saw that quote, I, I was actually, I wasn't familiar with Ian Curtis, um, uh, and I actually looked him up on the basis that's why I knew who he was, uh, and I, I discovered that he actually committed suicide at the age of uh, twenty-seven or whatever it was. And I thought, yeah. oh, he's a good person to to be compared to. <laughs> you are on Twitter, Dan Bland Comedy. Uh, do you like them one hundred and forty characters as a way of putting some comedy out there? Yeah, I think it's very good discipline uh, for writing because you have to get to, down to the very bare bones of... Uh, it really makes you kind of choose your wording um, more carefully and the river more carefully. And it's, I think it's a very good discipline um, to, to use. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I mean, it doesn't suit every comedian. Cause you, you have to be very... Um, uh, you have to be a very kind of short... Uh, 
No, really, on the suits the kind of one line of comedian, which uh, it's, uh, it's not something I do exclusively, but in terms of doing it on Twitter, it's, it's forcing you to, um, I mean, go for a very concise uh, and, and very sharp uh, writing style, which is, I mean, it's a good. Yeah, and you have to commit quite a lot of grammatical errors just to get a tweet in them characters, just to get your tweet across. That, that's a, yeah, do, yeah, occasionally you do have to, um, I mean, I, I tend to kind of, as a general rule, kind of pride myself on. Kind of accuracy, but yeah, sometimes uh, for the purposes of getting the message across or getting the getting the joke out, then you know sometimes uh, uh, grammar and uh, you know, correct punctuation, etc., um, does become a casual to that, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, pedantry, I suppose, really. <laughs> well, thank you very much for coming on the phone today, Dan, and we do look forward to seeing you in Burzum this week. Um, look, I'm very much yeah, look forward to it myself. Um, I hope I've given you something to to, to kind of work with there. It's uh, um, just, just reassure the listeners are much more funny and more engaging uh, on stage than I am on the phone. But uh, yeah, I'm looking very much forward to it. I can guarantee that. I've seen you live. I can definitely guarantee that. Thank you very much, Dan Bland. Thank you very much. No problem. All right. See you later then.